Not only do I love to browse for books, but I love to buy books. Cheap. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at mid- I had to check to see if my button was pushed. It was. It's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and I have a book haul. I have a book haul. Uh, last weekend, we went to a library book sale in North Conway, New Hampshire, one of our favorite places in the state. And we also stopped in a really awesome, one of my favorites, used bookstore in, in Conway, which is called The Local Bookie. And I highlighted that store in a previous video, which I will link below. It's awesome. And I did a video tour of the store. Well, we went there and I got a small pile of books there as well. So, library sale. I have a pile here. The library books were a dollar each. And the thrift store, the used bookstore books, were anywhere from two to three dollars each. So I scored big time. So let me show you what I got. These are from the library first. Again, remember, a doll, they were each a dollar. Um, I found this, I don't know if it's a first edition, but it's like, um, this was published, this copy of this book was published in 1973. Uh, this is Sula by Toni Morrison. And I love this book. I've read it several times. One of my favorite Toni Morrison books. And this is like the 1970s hardcover, um, old artwork. This book doesn't, barely looks aged, doesn't look like it's been read. Um, it has a price tag in the corner of $15. The last time I could buy a, a hardcover book for $15 was decades ago. So I have this for my collection. I have um, a paperback copy of this as well, but I love, love collecting good used copies of books I love. This one is um, another hardcover. And this is Loop Group by Larry McMurtry, who's one of my favorite American authors, contemporary American authors. He's since passed away. Um, it's a contemporary novel. And Larry McMurtry wrote a bunch of stuff. He wrote Lonesome Dove, another of my all-time favorites. He wrote Terms of Endearment. He wrote a bunch of stuff that is really, really good. This book was published in 2004. And it is um, Maggie, whose three grown-up daughters have arrived at her Hollywood home to try and make her see sense about her life, which isn't easy. First of all, because their own lives are a mess. And secondly, because as far as Maggie is concerned, her own life makes perfect sense. Uh, Larry McMurtry writes westerns really well. He writes contemporary novels really well. Um, and I really just love his writing, so I was happy to find that for a dollar. Um, I got this really interesting copy of Siddhartha by Heaven, Heaven, Herman Hess, and I, it's real, it's a really cool copy. So I found that, it's hardcover, <laughs> I shouldn't do that, <laughs> I should knock on that book, hardcover. This one was kind of a jackpot, but I have to say, I'm not a giant fan of Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout. I didn't love Olive Kittredge. Um, I enjoyed the movie. I did. But I didn't love the book. But I wanted to give um, Elizabeth Strout another try. And this is Olive again. Brand new hardcover for a dollar at the library sale. Um, and she basically is continuing the story of Olive Kittredge in uh, this self-titled previous novel. So, yeah. Um, this one is Good Faith by Jane Smiley. And I, let's see. Uh, this is Joe Stratford is someone you like at once. He makes an honest living helping nice people buy and sell houses. He's a realtor. His not very amicable divorce is finally settled and he's ready to begin again. It's 1982. He's pretty happy, pretty satisfied, but a different era has dawned. Joe's new friend Marcus Burns from New York seems to be suggesting that the old rules are ready to be repealed and now is the time to get rich quick. So that is uh, Good Faith by Jane Smiley. I'm not going to read the entire blurb on the covers. I don't want to do that. You guys are going to be really bored. This one is the Oxford World Classic. Um, I love those versions of Oscar Wilde, The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays. I have an Oscar Wilde around here somewhere. 
I don't think it's in this room, but I really love this version and it's got a bunch of stuff in it. So I grabbed that. Um, I am not a huge short story fan, but when I see some good stuff, I grab it because this was only a dollar. I took it. A Day in the Life of a Smiling Woman, Complete Short Stories by Margaret Drabble. So, and I really liked this copy. It's a paperback copy in perfect condition. Um, Margaret Drabble is a novelist and her short fiction never been collected. This collection was published in 2011. Um, I found another, actually I found a couple um, Larry McMurtry novels. This one, now there's a story and I wish I had gone and got the copy that I was gonna show you, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't. But this is another Larry McMurtry novel. And this one is was published in 1982, so it has the 1982 artwork on it, which I absolutely love. This is Cadillac Jack by Larry McMurtry. And I have, I'm gonna show you in a minute, but I have um, several of his novels in this type of artwork. Cadillac Jack is a rodeo cowboy turned antique scout whose nomadic, womanizing life, centered on his classic pearl-colored Cadillac, rambles between the Texas flatlands of flea markets and small-time auctions and Washington, D.C.'s political social life of parties, hustlers, vixens, and spies. I don't care what the rest of it is. It sounds really good. Um, another, another kind of, um, not an antique, but another classic, modern classic hardcover that I found in incredible condition. This is a, this book was published in 1951. This is Lie Down in Darkness by William Styron. Uh, he wrote Sophie's Choice, which was one of the most gut-wrenching, devastating books ever written. Uh, this one is Lie Down in Darkness, and it's in this really kind of vintage, vintage cover. Um, in Lie Down in Darkness, the South looms dark and ominous in the background. It's biblical rhetoric, it's conflicts between a tradition of religious fundamentalism and modern skepticism, racial conflicts, and the industrialization of a rural society. But more than a novel about a special place and time, it is a story of a tormented family submerged in infidelity and driven by a vengeful love that is blocked, hurt, and perverted. Peyton Loftus, whose tragic beauty sowed devotion and destruction whenever, wherever she went. Her ineffectual father, Milton, whose infidelity has made his marriage no more than a stage drama. And Helen, his wife, who loves only what she can control. Her crippled daughter, Maudie, or the childish part of her husband. So this is, you know, honestly, for the time that it was written, uh, that e even that short description was not very politically correct, but yeah. Um, okay, those were, that was the stack from the library book haul. And let me show you what I got from the um, used bookstore. And I haven't even taken the price stickers off, but like the price stickers are way higher than what I paid for these books. I think she sold them to me for half what these little written stickers have on them. This one is a very, of a brand new, almost brand new copy, hardcover copy, previous library copy of Mary Doria Russell's A Thread of Grace. Now I have the paperback copy of this that wasn't in great shape, so I found this, I think it was $3. And, oh gosh, um, it's September 8th, 1943, and 14-year-old Claudette Bloom is learning Italian with a suitcase in her hand. She and her father are among the thousands of Jewish refugees scrambling over the Alps toward Italy, where they hope to find safety now that the Italians have broken with Germany and made a separate peace with the Allies. The Blooms will soon discover that Italy is anything but peaceful, as seemingly overnight it becomes an open battleground for the Nazis, the Allies, resistance fighters, Jews in hiding, and Italian civilians trying to survive. Um, so this is uh, Mary Doria Russell's historical fiction. She is the author of The Sparrow, which was, which was, which is an incredible um, novel, kind of sci-fi historical uh, book with extremely strong undertones of religion. And um, I adore that book. And I read that two years ago. I don't remember. Um, and it's one of my favorites. It's exceptionally written and I really love her. So 
I found another William Styron book. Um, I read Sophie's Choice and I read another book so long ago I can't even remember what it was. Um, I don't even remember what it was. I wish I could tell you. Uh, um, it was, he wrote a book, I read Sophie's Choice, he wrote another book about depression, his depression, which was nonfiction, and that was incredible, and I, for the life of me, I'm going to put it in the text when I, when I remember, so you'll know what I'm talking about. This one is The Confessions of Nat Turner by, um, William Styron. Uh, in, in 1831, a black man awaits death in a Virginia jail cell. His name is Nat Turner, and he is a slave, a preacher, and the leader of the only effective slave revolt in the history of that peculiar institution. William Styron's vastly ambitious and stunningly accomplished novel, winner of the Pulitzer Prize, is Turner's confession made to his jailers under the duress of his God, a narrative that depicts a good man's transformation into an avenging angel, even as it encompasses all the betrayals, cruelties, and humiliations that made up slavery, and that still scar the collective psyche of both races. So yeah. Um, what else? Now, this, this is because of Conrad at Seven Days at Sea. And I watched his latest video, which I will link below, on his favorite authors. And he, he did this video be, basically because of a, um, kind of a way to highlight his channel without doing like a Q&A. He wanted to kind of fill us in on who his favorite authors are to basically give us a glimpse of who he is as a reader. And I wanted to start I'm going to do a, a separate video on, on reading books written by men, but I wanted to read some modern classics written by men just to dip my toes in. And this is Kurt Vonnegut's Breakfast of Champions. Um, I, don't, <laughs> don't ruin it for me. Don't, don't tell me, oh, that book is awful or he's a sexist pig or whatever. Whatever you think Vonnegut is, if I'm going to like it or not, I really do want to try it and see what I think. Uh, let's see. Um, one of his favorite characters, aging writer Kilgore Trout finds to his horror that a Midwest car dealer is taking his fiction as truth. The result is murderously funny satire as Vonnegut looks at war, sex, racism, success, politics, and pollution in America and reminds us how to see the truth. So we'll see about that one. Next one is a Willa Cather novel. I really love Willa Cather, Shadows on the Rock. And I really like this edition. These are vintage, um, vintage classics editions. I have another book of hers like this. Um, let's see, this, is, this comes immediately after uh, Death Comes for the Archbishop, which I read and loved. In 1697, Quebec is an island of French civilization perched on a bare gray rock amid a wilderness of trackless forests. For many of its settlers, Quebec is a place of exile, so remote that an entire winter passes without a word from home. But to 12-year-old Cécile Eau Claire, the rock is home, where even the formidable governor Frontenac entertains children in his palace and, and beavers lie beside the lambs in a Christmas creche. And I'm not going to read any more than that, but uh, I love, I absolutely love Willa Cather's writing and description. Um, let's see, this one is an old modern library copy of, of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom. I love buying old books like this. And this one is in just great condition, the old modern library edition. And I just really, I don't know why, but I really love these old modern libraries. Normally this would have a dust jacket on it. But I didn't even care. I just thought I'm going to snatch that one up. Another one um, by a dead white guy. <laughs> it's, it's William Faulkner's Sanctuary. And I know I've heard about the book. I've heard that it's pretty brutal. And Brian at Bookish um, is really loves William Faulkner. And I don't know if I've ever read anything by him. So this was available. It was a couple dollars. I picked it up. And uh, I'm glad to have it, and I will get to that. I found another Larry Mc McMurtry, and guess what? It's in the same 80s artwork as Cadillac Jack. 
And this is um, the Desert Rose. And I have terms of endearment in this artwork as well. But this one is um, the Desert Rose. Let's see. Harmony is a Las Vegas showgirl. At night, she's a lead dancer in a gambling casino. During the day, she raises peacocks. She's one of a dying breed of dancers faced with fewer and fewer jobs and an even bleaker future. Yet she maintains a calm cheerfulness in that arid neon landscape of supermarkets, drive-in wedding chapels, and all-night casinos. While Harmony's star is fading, her beautiful cynical daughter Peppers is on the rise. But Harmony remains wistful and optimistic through, through it all. She is the unexpected blossom in the wasteland, the tough and tender desert rose. Now, so far in any Larry McMurtry book I've read, he writes women really well. I have not read Terms of Endearment yet. I've seen the movie a couple of times. And a good friend of mine hated the book because she thought it was extremely sexist and horrible characters um, that treated women horribly. So we'll see about that one. But this is this was another one I wanted to add to my Larry McMurtry collection. So that's it. Those are all the books I got at the library sale, all the books I found at the used bookstore. I think for all of these books I spent $20. And we had a great day. We had a great day last weekend. So yeah, that's it for me. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Don't ruin Vonnegut for me if you hate it. Um, I just want to, I just, la 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 la, I, I want to go in and judge it on my own, and we'll see if I enjoy that book, but let me know if you've read any of the others, uh, same goes for Sanctuary, I know that it's going to be brutal, and I, I've heard what it's about a little bit, so I know that there was a read-along, I think Brian did a read-along a few months ago on that book, so other than that, leave me a comment below, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, bye everybody.